Hello everybody, it's Alex with the Trombone Shop here, and today I'm going to be talking about double and triple tonguing. Um, so the way I teach triple tonguing and double tonguing is if you can triple tongue, you can double tongue. Um, with triple tonguing, there's tukutu or tutuku or whatever whatever you use with, with double tonguing, it's just tuku. It's a lot easier. Um, we're going to be talking about how to do this. So um, for those of you that are new to double and triple tonguing, um, basically you want to be sure that you're using a ku syllable on your second or third beat for triple tonguing. So we're going to start with triple tonguing and work our way back into double tonguing. Now most of you have heard this kind of pattern where it's do 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 right? Um, we want to be changing that up so that we're getting able to do it faster because eventually do 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 it's going to get harder and harder to keep your your tongue working fast and being able to hit the back of your teeth. So for starters, let's talk about uh, where your teeth are hitting. So when you're um, double and triple tonguing, you when when you say ta or two, you'll notice as as you say it. So say it while you're while I'm visualizing this. If, while you say ta or two, your tongue, which is my right hand here, um, actually hits the back of your teeth, which is what this visualizer is. It hits the back of your teeth or slightly above it, um, but it, it hits and pulls away so that your air can go past your tongue and out your mouth. Um, when we say coo, rather than hitting here, it's going to pull back and hit the back corner of your mouth. So it's two coo. So it's one motion versus if you're saying two, two, two or ta, 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 it's going to be hitting here every time and having to pull back. Versus tuku allows your tongue to move in one motion and speed up the process. So it's tuku, tuku, tuku. Um, this whole time, you want to be sure that your air is getting past either syllable. So as you say the ku syllable, your tongue's going to come back and it's going to close off your throat. And in order to make that syllable effective, you have to push your air past it. So tuku, it should feel ku. You should feel that it, it's really more of a syllable than a ku syllable, where you're letting the air pass your um, past the start of the sound. So that's how you how you start working on this. Now, for either double or triple tonguing, you want to start by working on your ku or ka syllable. I use ku because it helps me visualize the air going past. So you want to be sure that your ku syllable is just as solid as your ta or tu syllable so that it's um, just as smooth. So if I go... There shouldn't be a lot of difference. It should be hard to tell which one I'm doing. I was using it there. Sometimes you can still tell, but it, it, you, the goal is to be as close to your two syllable as possible with your ku syllable. So you want to get working on just a really warm sound. Once you're comfortable doing that, then you want to work back on choosing what pattern to use. Now, for triple tonguing, the way I work on this is I'll go through and I'll play a triple tonguing pattern like this. I'll just play that once single tongued and then come back down the same way. I'll play that once single tongued, then I'll play it with all ku syllables. Just nice and easy, just like that. Um, as I work in my single tongue, I choose one, uh, as, I, as I work in the ta syllable again, 
I choose one syllable to put the K on. So when I start this, I always start with the hardest one just so that I can, I can do it. I start with Ku on the front to practice it. It's not very practical, but um, I go Ku Tu Tu so that I'm practicing using it as the dominant part of my syllable so that I get the same result. So it, so it would be Ku Tu Tu Ku, Ku Tu Tu Ku, Ku Tu Tu Ku, just like that. And then you speed it up over time. Just really easy, just let it happen, and then you can start to speed it up. Then you do the same thing with your other two, with it on the other two spaces. So you do two to coo. You can see I can start to get faster as I get used to it. Same goes for tukutu. Now, the other thing you want to be sure is that um, you understand the purposes for these. Now, as I mentioned, you don't typically use kutu tu. We'll talk about that one and why I practice that in a moment. The, the first thing I want to talk about is tukutu. I find tukutu to be the easiest introduction to using that, that triplet pattern because it's tukutu, tukutu, tukutu. It just repeats a little bit easier for a lot of players. Um, the other thing that it does is it, it emphasizes the, the, the clarity over time. So it allows it to be a little bit evener. Now, um, you don't always want to do that, but that's, that's one reason you would want to use that. Then you've got tutuku. Now tutuku puts the, the K syllable on the last syllable, which is gonna allow your front syllable to be extra emphasized because when you say tukutu, it's gotta pull back tukutu tu. It's gotta go forward again. So you're losing the pressure on your on your downbeat for every beat. So tukutu tukutu versus tutuku. Tu, tu, ku, tu, it pulls back and lets you have more room to do your next two syllable, um, which makes it easier to do things like this. It allows that da, 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 da. It, it allows that, that last note to pop a little bit more. Then we've got um, kind of a mix of both where um, Maybe you're doing some six tuplets where it's pretty basic. You want that do do go do do go do or do go do go do go do do go do go do go do. You you put the K syllable um, on different places in each triplet because it's a six tuplet and you want it to feel really smooth. <laughs> It kind of helps smoothen things up a little bit over time. So there's a lot of different places to do that. Um, and then you've got double tonguing, which is a little bit more straightforward. Um, the, the thing that allows me to get faster as I go is to lighten up on the tongue and on the K syllable. Because if you're doing do, do, ku, it's going to be aggressive, right? So you can lay back and use a ga syllable instead or a gu. My air is just going. 
you just want the air to flow as smoothly as possible. I could even smoothen that up a little bit more. Now, another thing you want to be sure you're doing as you use your coo syllable, your K is going to come back in your mouth um, and the air is going to want to escape somewhere new. You, if you're not careful, your lips are going to pop out really, really easily. So just be careful of that. Um, as you're working on this, know that it's okay to not know how to do it at first. Um, take some time, work on your K-syllable um, anytime you're still having trouble. Be sure your K-syllable is nice and smooth, then work it back into what you're doing. You want to be able to do that very easily so that when you're walking along, you can practice this without even a mouthpiece. You, you should just be able to do that. Um, so I hope you found this helpful. Um, just so you have a reference for what kind of scales I'm using. I'm just using an E-flat scale. There's um, an excerpt on this in the Arbens that kind of talks about this as well. It's just the triple tonguing section and then their double tonguing section. I usually, like I said, start with triple, work back to double, even though um, triple can be harder for some students. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. I love talking about double and triple tonguing. It's a fun subject for me. So um, I hope you found this helpful. And uh, for those of you who are scared to try double tonguing, that's okay too. Um, it, it takes some time and you may not be there yet, but uh, over time, you'll find that this skill gets easier and easier. So I hope you found this helpful. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks, guys.